Hey guys, Mortgage Maintenance. Today is episode number four of Guess the Trade subscriber loadouts. You might want to go watch the previous videos if you haven't watched any before to get an idea what this video is or keep watching this one. You'll eventually get it, but I'm not going to go into the details of things. I'm just going to jump right into loadouts today. But before we do get started, Ian Gregory Home did make mention a couple suggestions. He thought maybe we should limit the amount of pictures just to kind of speed up things. Again, that's totally up to you guys. I did tell him, however, I've already got like 25 people and they've sent in more than three already so i'm kind of already stuck with that but one of the things that he mentioned i thought was a really good idea is at the beginning of say episode four that we're in now i'm going to mention episode three's uh subscribers the loadouts that we went over and go ahead and say what their trade was in this video to give that answer even though that should be in the comment section below of that video if you go down through there and read those but last episode was stefan kavalik and matt hmm they are both general contractors who do a lot of different things. So there's not really one specific deal that they're in. They're kind of the same thing as like what I am. And then Matt did say that he was geared more towards doing electrical work just because it was what was available in his area for his price. He, he stays busy with electrical. That's why a lot of his tools were kind of geared in that way. And again, sometimes I know the answer to that and sometimes I don't. So make sure that if you're in this loadout video that you spend time in the comment section below uh, letting people know what you are in your trade and then also that lets me know the answer to be able to give it to you in this video as well but today we're going to look at three different ones uh, we have search eternal lock hammer and jan p those are the three loadouts we're going to look at today i believe all three of these have loadout pictures as far as at the end of it where all their tools are blown out and laid out on a table so we're going to look at the bags and kind of look at their setups how they're in the bags and then once we get to that screen that's when we'll start diving into the tools but let's go ahead and look at search eternals so we start out with search eternals and we see that he's got an mb i think this is an mb2 i could be wrong on that i'm not real good with what the mb series um uh, which ones are which i do have one of them in particular but i can't even remember what the one i have is but i think this might be an mb2 uh, you guys can correct me if i'm wrong looking at the side he's got some tools on the side he got a flashlight in the top next green this is the up close picture of that little side pocket I've never even thought about using my MB2 for tools because it's just one big open pocket. There's the back view. Again, got tape measure, uh, some electrical tape. Here's the other side, a right angle adapter, it looks like a Husky screwdriver, and then a little key of some sort. Uh, here it is opened up. Looks like he's got a bag of some sort, some sort of electric screwdriver, uh, some strippers and a screwdriver and some zip ties. And then here in the very front pocket, the little small pouch, uh, we've got like a Brillo type pad and then an ink saw. And then also it looks like a Klein flip socket and something else that I can't tell. Again, there's his Milwaukee flashlight. That's what was inside at the beginning. And then here they are all blown out. This one's gonna be a quick one. He does have one of those Vito parts bags. Uh, that's one of those parts bags that I've been looking to get and I keep telling myself the price is really high, but actually for the amount of them you get, it's not too awful bad. I am curious if any of you guys have the parts bag, uh, the Vito PB2s and PB1s. I don't even know what the, the, what the numbers are. Uh, so search eternal. Let me know how those bags have been working out for you. If you think that they're well worth it, I am interested in that. Uh, from any of you that have feedback on those, I've thought about getting them several different times, but let's go ahead and look at his pictures blown out. So he does have a cobalt meter, it looks like over here. I know nothing about those. Uh, and then inside of his parts bag, let's see if we can kind of tell what's in there. Uh, looks like some sort of a line level and then maybe some little wires and things like that. I'm just looking at that to try to see if it will help us get a rough idea of what it might be that he does. And then over here we got a hyper tough electric screwdriver is what we were looking at before. Uh, don't know anything about that in particular that milwaukee light right there is one of my favorite little lights that one works really well he's got the 180 knipix cobras those are the alligator style and not the push button style i know several of you like the alligator style over the push button and then some of you like the push button over the alligator uh, let me know in the comments below which one of those two you prefer i personally prefer the push button myself i am interested in what this little orange Looks like a flippable thing is. I don't know what that is. Is that like a door stop? Uh, maybe a door switch uh, magnet to make it to where you can make a door switch stay? Maybe possibly because I'm leaning towards HVAC as I look at this stuff. Uh, 
although it's not everything within it. So he also has a Reller Mag Mat. I really like that. That's been one of my favorite purchases in the last little bit. That thing works extremely well. Doesn't mar up surfaces. I really like that. Malco screwdriver over here, it looks like, with a Malco nut driver inside of it. Milwaukee stripper. Also has a Husky 11-in-1 style small tubing cutter, some service wrenches, a flare wrench right there. Again, to me, I'm leaning towards some type of HVAC. I don't see any of the, you know, field piece or Testo or any of those kind of leads or anything like that, but it may be that he has those and something else. Uh, but most of these tools to me are kind of going towards something in that direction. I could be totally wrong with that. But again, take a look at his tools one more time. Uh, there they are uh, out in the open for you to look at. This is his daily bag that he takes wherever it is. Tell us what you think Search Eternal does for a living or what he does with these tools in the comments below. And then also, if you see a tool that you got a question about, make sure and drop that down below as well. Maybe he'll answer us and give us the feedback on that. But the next person we're gonna look at is Lockhammer. And I believe his name is Miles, if I remember correctly from the email. And I think he's got a tough built pouch. And again, he's also got his tools blown out at the end. So I'll kind of go through all the other pictures pretty quickly. But let's go ahead and take a look at his loadout and see what we think about his tools. So the first picture that we look at here, we can see his tough built pouch. And again, I'm not real familiar with the names on these. So I don't know if that's the electrician one or what that brand might be or which you know version of the tough built pouch that is. So if you know that, you can comment that down below. It does have that Makita blower over here. Uh, I really like my Malief one so far. Uh, but those are really nice, uh, pretty expensive, but pretty nice. Uh, but again, here's his loadout up close, looking at it in this way. Got Spider-Man back there in the background. Lots of tools on his workbench uh, that give you an idea that he does do a lot of different things, probably at his own house. Uh, going to the next picture, here's an up top view. of So you can see a little bit more about how the loadout is within his bag that he's got right there. And again, not going to spend a lot of time on these tools because we're going to get them blown out here in just a little bit. Uh, he's got some sort of a bit holder back there in the back holding his bits within a slot. And then these little red things right here, he's also got a picture of that. Maybe the next picture. Yeah, he took some PVC and made himself basically a screwdriver type holder or tool holder within that pouch. So that might be a good tip for some of you out there that carry a pouch that only has that really one big pouch within it but you want to carry a lot of tools and you don't want them beating and banging around and moving around every time you pull one in and out i think that's a pretty good idea to go ahead and build yourself something and make those slots work out to where you can use them and he i'm pretty sure that's just pvc if i remember right from his email and he kind of just like pvc welded them together in a way to make them work with his outfit so again that's a pretty nice idea you can see how it holds all his tools there so here's all the tools that are within that tough built pouch. So we see an icon Raptor style over there, uh, kind of like the Knipix Raptor. Uh, also has, it looks like, maybe it looks like a Vampire type, but I don't know if they've got black handles. So it's either Vampire or Engineers, it looks like. Flush cutter. He also has a smaller version of the pipe wrench and uh, Cobra. Those seem to be standard for most people these days. Uh, I think that's possibly... I don't know what kind of flashlight that is. I want to say it's an Olight, but I could be wrong on that. And then he's got two vessel screwdrivers, one the ratcheting and then one the, uh, that's one of the first vessel screwdrivers, the black one there that I bought. Uh, I don't really care for that one because of the weight. It's not that it's a bad screwdriver. I just don't like the weight of it. And then there is a Milwaukee light. He also has the same Milwaukee light as Search Eternal had. And again, like I said, that's a really good light. I don't know what this thing here in particular is for. Uh, also has a small little level looking thing. So several tools there that I don't know exactly what he would use those for. Uh, but I also do know what he does for a living. So And I don't do very much of that. So that might make sense. So if you're somebody who does what he does for a living. And you might get a guess of it from his name. I'll just say that. That would be my little hint to you. Uh, some of those tools might look really familiar to you and you're going to say, I know exactly what he does. So again, there's his tools in that. Uh, but he also has another, uh, little pouch that he included. That's his daily marking tools. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. And then we'll come back to talk about guessing what he does. So here's another tough built pouch of some kind. Again, I don't know again, what the name of this tough built pouch is. He's got a fast cap, uh, tape measure on the front of it. He also has that chalk shot, a Pika pencil, 
a ink saw, another small pencil, a pair of scissors it looks like. He's got them all blown out right here. So these are all basically what he said is his daily like marking tools, things that he uses to mark up his work and things like that. So you can take a look at those uh, that's within that pouch right there. If you've got any questions, make sure and ask him that down below. But again, going back to this picture here, uh, again, take a look at these tools, see what it is that you think about them. Uh, what do you think that he does daily with those tools and his line of work? Again, there's a lot of them there that I have no clue what you use them for, uh, but it makes sense to me because I don't do what he does for a living. So uh, again, let us know in the comments below what you think about lock hammers. What do you think he does with those tools each and every day? And then hopefully again, he will answer us down in the comment section below. So that's two down. But the last person that we're gonna look at today is Jan P. Has a Vito TPLC. Again, one of my favorite small bags from Vito. Uh, so he's got a lot of tools within this one. Again, also has them blown out the end. So you won't see me spend much time. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at his bag and see what we think about it. So let's go ahead and get into that. So here's his TPLC, looking at it from the outside. Again, all the things on the outside are typically where you put the things you think you're gonna grab the most. He's got a drill driver out there, also a vessel screwdriver, it looks like, Pika pencil, flashlight, all those things. Get over into the next picture, he's given us the weight, but I think that that is in uh, maybe kilograms or something like that. Uh, it's, I think he told me it was 17 pounds is what he told me, but he's giving you the weight of his bag there. Going to the next picture, here it is opened up just so you can kind of see an idea of how he's got his tools fitted out within the TPLC. And again, I think that this always helps if you're in the market for buying a bag, just being able to see people put their tools in the bag, sometimes that helps you uh, get an idea of whether or not that bag would be right for me. You might even have total different tools than what Jan P has, but you can kind of see how he's got his tools laid out in there and maybe it would help you make that decision of, I think my tools would fit in that bag pretty nicely but again here you can see I think he's got the Weeha electrician's hammer also got the Vera screwdriver back there that seems to be a big hit among the loadouts that we've done so far I think that's been in several maybe this is the third one uh, go, go into the next picture uh, here it is from the other angle again give you an idea there the one thing about the LC is that you can see he's got some that stick up above kind of where if you close it those are going to be up a little high and it looks like it's a Bosch drill driver and then here's an up top picture uh, looking down inside of it. Again, just take a look at how he's got it laid out there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because his very next picture has them all blown out. We'll take a closer look at them there. And here they are. So pencil wise up here in the corner. I'm not sure what the first pencil is. Looks like that's all metal. Takes some kind of a lead. Then he's got the Pika 3030 and then a Pika marker. And then an ink pen. Looks like a Baco Crescent wrench. Pro Exxon, uh, metric Allen keys. And then he's also got some different bits there, some different screwdrivers, Vera, Weeha vessel, uh, several different ones. Does have the Tool Check Plus. We've talked about that a little bit. Carries a 300. So that's a, I think a 300 is a 12 inch. So that's why that was sticking up a little high. Cause I was wondering, because I know I've had a 10 inch in that bag and it didn't seem to stick up high. Uh, it was a Bosch 12 volt drill driver and then he also has Knipix twin grip uh, Knipix pliers wrench diagonal cutters some uh, needle nose also the Weeha electrician's hammer small stability level small maybe Bostish level there uh, also a I can't tell what that says Hamatech hey, maybe laser distance measure Small multimeter down here in the bottom corner, along with the Fior light, some cabinet keys, a fastback O light baton three, a putty, a couple different putty knives, combination square, and then also some Wagos inside of some Ziploc bag, along with some miscellaneous screws and band aids and things like that. So, again, there's an overall, I think that's the last picture of his, yes, of all his tools. So take one last look at those tools and then let us know again in the comments below what you think Jan P does with these tools uh, in his line of work. Got a lot of different things there. To me, it's more of a general tool bag uh, that where you can do more than just one thing anyways, even though that's kind of the boat that we're all in these days for the most part. We might all specifically do one thing more often than not, but these days we're so 
low on the amount of people doing work. It seems like we get put in positions to need to do more things than what we typically want to do anyways. Because I've always said, if you can do one thing, you can typically do most things. Uh, and again, I'm not saying you can do most things to a level of what someone who only does that one thing all the time is. But a lot of the things we do are exactly the same. It's just different materials that you're using in different ways to maybe go about doing it, but it's still a puzzle that you're putting together when you're in service work anyways, trying to figure out, you know, what's wrong, what, what in this process is not working and how do I replace whatever that thing is. It's the same, whether you're in electrical, HVAC, plumbing, it's the same thought process, just different materials and different tools to get the job done typically. But that's the three loadouts today. Again, we had search eternal lock hammer and JMP. Uh, again, I've been a little bit under the weather. I hope, I'm not too awful nasally in this video, and then I'm gonna to have to do a lot of editing to cut out the coughing and things that I did within this. So uh, hopefully that this was useful. Again, let me know in the comments below and let us know in the comments below what your guesses are. If you got questions for tools, any of those things, put them in the comments below. But as always, you guys stay safe. Have a blessed day. See you on the next video.